This fifth video outlines some things that you can do in a survey with scales. This includes recoding the scale within the survey so that the data are how you want them, and also scoring a scale within a survey, which can then be used in numerous ways, like giving people feedback based on their scores, or only showing certain questions to people if they meet a certain criterion based on that scale. This is the Problem Gambling Severity Index. There are nine questions here, each with four response options. Never, sometimes, most of the time, and almost always. This is a scale that we use in just about every gambling research study that we do, and it determines how at risk you are of experiencing gambling-related problems. Now, it's not the greatest scale. Our lab has come out with much better scales that we're using in many of our studies these days, but we still use the PGSI because that's what everyone expects to see, for now. So to program this in, I'm going to create a new block, because I want this to be in its own block, and this is called the PGSI. Now this question will be a matrix table, just like gambling frequency above, so I go in here and select matrix table. Remember there's many different types of matrix tables available to you, but I just want to lick it single answer matrix table. Uh, and I'll type in my text here, or I can just copy it over. And remember, sometimes when you copy things over, the formatting doesn't go that well. There we go. And here are my questions for the PGSI. Remember, I can just copy and drop them in here, which makes life so much easier. So just make sure there are nine options in there. There are. And now I'll put in my responses. So never, sometimes. And see, again, it's trying to get a bit smart most of the time and it hasn't quite got it. All right, now what I've done there is I've just kept hitting enter and it's kept adding the scale points and I've got too many. So I need to drop this down to four. Make sure they're the right ones. Never, sometimes, most of the time, and almost always. Now let's check, we can put on forced response here. Make sure that people answer every question, particularly important for scales. Just to show you a few other options with matrix tables while we're here, some of these matrix tables can get pretty long. So we can actually repeat the headers part way down the table. We can do things like add in a bit of white space. People sometimes find that helps when there's too much text on a page, a bit of white space can help. Um, and you can do some other bits and pieces here with the tables as well. You can re repeat the headers in the middle and at the bottom or both, all over the place, just to make sure that people don't have to scroll around heaps to remember what their responses are. Now let's go into, uh, let's make sure we change our question number first, so PGSI here, and then we'll go into our recode values thing again, and let's see how this is set up. Now the PGSI isn't scored 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's actually scored 0, uh, 1, 2, and 3, and this is going to be important because we're actually going to score this scale in our survey. So I'll click close, I've got that all set up now, and when I click on this thing again, there is another option here called scoring. And when I click on that, that's going to take me to a new screen and it's going to try and score whatever I'm asking it to score. So I'll just do auto scoring here and you'll see it's kind of gone back to this zero, uh, one, two, three, and four coding again. So I need to set these scores as zero, set these scores as one, set these scores as two, whoops. I accidentally changed that one, so I'll fix that again, and set these scores as three. So there's a difference between the values that the automatic scoring in Qualtrics uses and the values that your variable is going to have when you download it. But at the moment, that now is going to score this for me, and it's going to give it a, a score in my data set that I can then use later in the survey. So now I'm back in my survey editor, and I've set up this PGSI so that it's scored within the survey dynamically. And that means that I can use that to give participants feedback. I can tell them what their score might be, or I can show them a message based on their score to say, hey, you might need some help, maybe call a gambling helpline. Or I can use their score to determine what questions they see next. Now that's precisely what I'm going to do with this because my next questions are around help seeking. And even if someone's a gambler, there's probably not much point asking them about help seeking if they don't have any problems. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use that score out of that PGSI to determine who sees which questions and also show you some things around survey flow. See you there.